Hi guys, welcome back to Exmo Lex. Whether you're a family member of someone who left the church or you're the one who left, it can be an emotional experience. When you're a member of the church, your identity is often wrapped up in your religion. It's who you were before you were born and who you'll be when you die. It's usually an enormous part of your life and it affects how you raise your children, the person you marry, and how you spend your time. You believe that your eternal family is dependent on the choices you and your family members make in this life. So what happens when, say, your child decides to leave? You'd be devastated. And if you're the one leaving, you'll probably feel devastated too. It is understandable from both sides to feel a lot of pain, confusion, and anger. Today, I want to talk about how Mormon families handle their loved ones leaving the church. I want to make this a learning experience because not everybody handles it the same way. There's going to be positive and negative reactions. There are good ways to handle it and bad. So if someone isn't sure what to say, I would love for them to see this video before they react so they can hear from people who have actually been through it what was helpful and what was hurtful. So I asked you guys to send your own stories and I'll share a couple of my own. From my immediate to my extended family, I've gotten a lot of reactions, both positive and negative. The number one best thing that any of my believing family members said to me after I left was from my mom. And I'll never forget her exact words because it made me feel so much lighter. One day pretty soon after I left the church, we were talking and she said, family is a heck of a lot more important than religion. My mom has always been super, super faithful in the church, so when she knowingly put me before her religion, that meant a lot to me. It really made me feel like she would love me no matter what. One thing we heard from family that was very unhelpful and made us feel very unheard was that they sent an email soon after we left the church with just a list of things not to do in their house slash around them. And it was dumb stuff like, don't swear in our home. We felt like, really? This is what you're concerned about? Especially given that they also swear on occasion, we were like, why is that your first response? <laughs> now I want to share some of your stories, and to anybody who sent a story, thank you so much. I don't know why, but in my mind, every time I make a video like this and I ask for stories, I always feel like nobody's going to send any stories and I'm not going to be able to make a video. But then I'm always blown away by how many stories I get. So obviously I can't read them all, there's way too many, but I really appreciate everybody who contributed. Also, if you didn't specify whether or not you wanted to remain anonymous, I'm going to just keep it anonymous, just in case. Hallie says, my mom is an incredibly faithful Mormon. When I was on my way out of the church, I asked her a question that I thought had an easy answer. I asked if she would rather have her children be dead or die while they were still active believing members, or still alive but fully removed from the church. She responded that she needed some time to think about it, which I didn't understand what there was to think about. When I asked her again a few days later, she had concluded that she just couldn't answer the question. I took that as her preferring to have her children dead and in the church rather than alive and out of it. It's challenging now that I have removed my records and thinking that my mom would rather me be dead than no longer remember. Not her exact words, but her lack of a real response can only make me believe this is how she actually thinks. So this is a great example of how not to act when a loved one leaves the church. Like Hallie said, this question should have an extremely simple answer. The LDS Church claims to value families more than any other religion. They put a huge emphasis on families. If they care so much about families, it shouldn't even be a question. Of course you would rather have your children be alive regardless of what their beliefs are. Anything else sounds real cult-like, don't you think? I told my mom I didn't believe anymore. She texted me that my leaving was worse and hurt her more than when my sister died. This is similar to the last one, but in more direct terms. I'm sorry. This is heartbreaking. Please. If you're religious and your children leave, don't say such hurtful things to them. If you don't feel like you can express yourself without saying something like this, don't say anything. Give yourself time to process so that you can be more positive. My family took a not going to address it position, which means we all just make mini comments that kind of let each other know where we stand, which is quite good because I wasn't ready to talk for a while. My husband is still in and he took it amazingly well. We sat down and set fair boundaries around tithing, our kids, and each other. We agreed to 5% tithing, no baptisms of kids unless they decide at 16 years old at the earliest. The kids' church time is purely based on their decisions and we are both allowed to openly share our opinions. He also took me coming out as bi in stride. 
These are both great responses, especially the way the husband reacted. Setting boundaries, communicating, finding common ground, healthy compromise. This is exactly how to have a great relationship. And as far as the not going to address it position, I don't really see any problem with this either. This is how my relationship is with most of my aunts, uncles, grandparents, etc. It's slightly uncomfortable at certain times, but for the most part, it's easier than having disagreements. And it's definitely better than being told hurtful things. My dad talked in circles around the issues I had with the church and then asked me if it was enough for me to stay. My mom asked if she had dropped me on my head and said that I just needed to read the Book of Mormon again. An example of what not to do. Don't tell someone they just need to pray, just need to read the Book of Mormon, just need to X, Y, Z. Most people making their way out of the church have tried that. They've prayed harder than they've ever prayed. They've tried to believe. They're leaving because those things didn't work. My immediate family were very unsure of how to act around me. Slowly, I started making choices that separated me more and more from the church. They became more vocal about their disapproval. My mom said out of all the kids, she never thought I'd be the one who'd do this to her, which was hurtful because I thought I was really growing beautifully as a person. It hurt me to think that just by living my life, I caused my family pain. Another example of what not to do. Your children choosing to live their life in a way that brings them happiness and fulfillment isn't them doing something to you. If someone you love is happy, how hard is it to just be happy for them? That's what selfless love is all about. Don't make their life and their choices all about you. My wife and I left about six months ago. My family was pretty cool about our leaving. My parents told us that they loved us no matter what and our relationship with the church wouldn't change that. I've had a few tough interactions with my mom. Most of those have been her wanting clarity on what we believe, why we left, and what we're going to teach our children, etc. My in-laws were a little trickier. My mother-in-law immediately went on the offensive and told my wife that she never had a real testimony and that she could never feel the spirit in our house, so it makes sense. My father-in-law refused to talk to us for almost two months after we left, and when he finally did talk to us, he only wanted to answer all of our questions and fix our doubts. Neither of us had a normal, non-churchy conversation with my father-in-law since then. Telling someone you never had a real testimony is gaslighting. You don't know what's going on inside someone's head. You don't get to decide what type of testimony they had. But the first family I feel like was much better. Telling you that you were loved no matter what, asking for clarity, those things are good as long as they're done in a kind way. My mom was super supportive and asked about my faith journey. My sister freaked out and asked me all sorts of weird questions like, do I matter? And are we going to have an open marriage? It's a bit bizarre to suddenly feel like it's okay to ask somebody all about their sexual habits just because they left your group. Sounds a bit culty, no? Needless to say, don't do that. I'm glad that your mom was at least supportive, though. My grandparents said, we still love you and know that after you're done with this phase, you'll come back to the truth. Essentially, they cemented the fact that their love is conditional and that they know me better than I know myself. Don't do the you're going through a phase thing. Again, it's just one of those things that you cannot know unless you're the person going through it. I also had family members do the phase comment. It wasn't direct. It was more like, oh, when I was younger, I questioned X, Y, Z. I also went through a difficult time with the church when I was younger. I understand because I've been there. When in reality, my journey was and is nothing like theirs. My parents said they understood and thought it might be something I needed until I announced it on Facebook. Then they shamed, griped me out on Facebook and acted surprised over the same letter they had already read. I can leave, but I better not talk about it and embarrass them. Yes, I completely understand this one. My parents were pretty chill about me leaving, but once I started talking about it publicly, it became a whole hot mess. Definitely an example of what not to do. Don't shame people for talking about what is important to them. We, my husband and I, finally told my family a couple weeks ago after deciding at the new year to officially be done with the church. My dad said that he was sad but loved me anyway. I wanted to share my reasoning, but they did not want to know. I insisted because I've heard awful lies my entire life about people who leave. I wanted them to know I did a lot of research and I couldn't in good conscience stay in the church. But as I talked, my mom left the room. My dad heard me out and of course had to bear his testimony. I thought it was fair. He heard me out, so I heard him. He acknowledged that we were doing what we believed in and he wanted us to choose for ourselves. We hugged and left it at that. My dad had to go out of town and visit some extended family the following week. He had dinner with my aunt and uncle and let them know in a nice way that my husband and I had left the church. My uncle actually messaged me afterward and let me know that he and my aunt left the church one and a half years ago and that life is so much better now and they were proud of me. I really appreciated him reaching out because I never thought anyone would be proud of me for choosing to leave. It helped a lot. A lot of different responses here. I'm glad your dad was at least willing to listen to you. 
I feel like for a lot of people who leave the church, we want our believing friends and family to know why we left. And a lot of times it's because we don't want them to assume that we're just being lazy or that we didn't have a strong testimony or that we didn't want to follow the rules anymore. We are following our consciences. We are doing what we believe is the right thing to do. And I love that your uncle reached out. I actually had an extended family member do the same thing after they stumbled across my TikTok. Let me know if you want a story time about that. Stephanie said, I recently told my family that my husband, daughter, and I have left the church in an email. I was terrified of telling them in person because I didn't think I could handle it. I've attached a picture of what my mom texted me after I sent it. The text says, got your email. We understand your decision and your anxiety about making it. Yes, the church is very important to us, but that doesn't change our relationship with you. As far as we're concerned, our relationship is unchanged. Now, can I come over and give you a hug? We love you just as much today as we ever did. Plus, we have your Disney World goodies to give you. We can leave right now. After I said they could come over, she and my dad only live 20 minutes from us, they came over and we talked like we normally do and nothing was changed. When they left, they both gave my husband and I huge hugs and told us that they love us no matter what. It was such a relief. Every interaction since then has been totally the same as it was before we told them. We talk about everything. They've talked about church with us, but more is just telling us funny things that have happened in their ward, talking about their callings, etc. They haven't tried shoving church down our throats at all. This is beautiful and perfect. This is what selfless love is really about. This is how you should react if your family member tells you they're leaving your religion. Love, acceptance, kindness, and in the end, not letting it change your relationship. As much as some of us, me, like to joke about it, we don't leave the church and suddenly become evil, angry, devil-worshipping apostates. We left because we simply didn't believe. We want to do what's right. We just believe that what's right is different than what you believe it is. If Mormon God is real, and he's the loving God that Mormons describe him as, he wouldn't punish you or your family members, here or in the afterlife, for simply doing what they believe is right. Let me know your thoughts in the comments, and please continue to share your stories. Thank you to everyone who shared, and a special thank you to my patrons. You guys are incredible. Thank you so much for your support. Big thank you to At Kigar, Craig Call, Jake Nunyabiz, and Melissa Jane for supporting at the Demon Tier on my Patreon. If you would like to support the channel or follow me on any of my other social media so you can see more content, you can find links for that in the description. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share. It really helps me out because the YouTube algorithm is a bitch. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!